Because uh, Steve Manning has been working in Malawi, Christian Nukulubu, he couldn't come to attend this meeting, but you were at the same program. So, go ahead, please. Good morning, everybody, and Gerth, many thanks for inviting me to speak today, it, albeit at short notice. Uh, I'm actually writing this talk this morning. But I'd like to tell you about the Orthopaedic Clinical Officer Training Program in Malawi, which I believe is a, a useful African model of delivering orthopaedic care. I'm Steve Mannion, I'm uh, the Chairman of World Orthopaedic Concern UK. I have a half-time job in the United Kingdom, but also uh, have a half-time job with CBM, International Physical Disability Charity, and I do uh, overseas work six months a year. Um, Malawi, poor central southern African country, one of Africa's poorest, 12 million people, um, subsistence farming, bit of famine every now and again, and about 12% HIV positive. For the whole of Malawi, for those 12 million people, there are only five orthopaedic surgeons. For, there's only one for central and uh, northern Malawi. It was me when I was there full time from 1999 to 2003, and we now recently have uh, another appointee. As such, as a usually conservative doctrine of fracture management, much as we've heard in the other presentations today, and fracture fixation largely reserved for specific fractures and for non-unions. Orthopedic practice in Malawi, probably no difference to many of the other African countries where many of the, uh, this audience work. Late presenting neglected trauma, bone and joint sepsis, septic arthritis, osteomyelitis, and paediatric orthopedics is a big part of my work. Club foot, genovalgum, genuvarum, etc. But also the more unusual cases, here's a big sarcoma. Um, HIV may be the biggest cause of mortality and morbidity in Africa, and then perhaps malaria, but injury is 16% of the global burden of disease, and this has been echoed by some of the other uh, presenters this morning. It affects young males and has huge socio-economic aspects, because those young males are often the providers in sub-Saharan Africa for a very large extended family. Here's some of the aspects of trauma in Malawi, typical thing, overburdened, poorly maintained vehicles on poorly maintained roads, typically treated conservatively like this. Here's the burn of open wounds. Uh, Non-unions of this kind of thing treated with the, the orthopaedic surgeons do this kind of reconstruction, a signed nail, which many of you will know. Um, motor vehicle accidents, 1.2 million people killed a year. Uh, by 2020, this will be third in the global burden of disease. The WHO is working on prevention, but there's a lot to be done for better treatment of the injured. I think this is what World Orthopaedic Concern is really about and the, the presentations today. The roads of Malawi are 200 times more dangerous than, per vehicle on the road than the United Kingdom. Here's one particularly bad example of this. This was a, an open back truck carrying 40 people to a funeral, which was in a head-on collision with a, uh, an articulated lorry. I happened upon this just as it had occurred. 26 people dead on the road, which would be an absolute major disaster in the United Kingdom had it happened. The 16 very severely injured were taken to the local district hospital, where there was not one single doctor in attendance, where there was not one single single role of Plaster of Paris, and this is the scene in the emergency room trying to cope with that. Crocodile injuries, by no means uncommon, but motor vehicle accidents is more common, of gross burden of disease. Femoral factors, we're fixing the UK, much as our other speakers this morning, we treat by, by conservative methods in the most part, reserving operative intervention for very select groups. We have a big club foot project in Malawi. Those of you who were there yesterday at the club foot session, we now essentially have abolished um, uh, club foot deformity and disability in the country. I'll skip through these ones. We'll have sort of about. Well, orthopaedic surgeons, well, 80% of orthopaedic surgeons worldwide are in developed countries. That's 26 of 191 nations worldwide. For the entire East African uh, region, of 200 million people. There are only 40 orthopaedic surgeons uh, of a population of 200 million. The problems, it's difficult to recruit surgeons in Africa. Why? Because the, the, there's no remuneration. It's poorly remunerated when compared to infectious diseases or public health, which are donor-driven and dollar salaries. And also in the past, there's been a big problem with medical migration. You train a doctor in Africa, he then goes to the United Kingdom or to North America or to Australia for training, and the, the temptation is understandably not to come back. So in Malawi, the clinical officer system was developed, training non-doctors to do a lot of what we would call normal, should normally be done by, only by surgeons. Orthopaedic clinical officers typically already have a background in healthcare. They've usually been healthcare assistants, which is a very low level of healthcare provider able to put dressings on, etc. They then are competitively selected and undergo 18 months specific training in orthopaedic surgery. 
they're able to undertake closed fracture treatment to, to apply casts, etc. They can apply traction to femoral fractures and they can undertake basic wound care, debridement of open wounds and open fracture and the like. They're part of a referral network. This is the beauty of the malarian system. There may well be only five orthopaedic surgeons, but I give you the quality of orthopaedic care nationally in Malawi is better than many of the other African countries in which I've worked because a poor person injured in northern Malawi in a remote rural hospital subserved by a clinical officer, if there is a specific need for operative intervention, there is a referral network back to one of the major centres in the regional capital and treatment from someone like myself or one of the, no the local surgeons. Uh, they, they are facilitated by the orthopaedic surgeons and visitors. So when I was full-time in Malawi, I visited every district hospital on a two-monthly basis. I did a ward round with the orthopaedic clinical officer looking at the problem cases they had on the ward. I did a clinic of the patients from the local area and then operated on, in that district hospital on patients which needed it and also facilitated referral back to the centre for those whereby the operative resources locally weren't sufficient. They're an invaluable resource from those. Here's myself, sporting a rather unusual beard, with two of the, uh, the orthopaedic clinical officers I work with closely, one of whom is sadly now dead from HIV, and that the HIV epidemic has taken a toll on healthcare staff and also on orthopaedic clinical officers. In terms of higher qualifications, they are able to undertake a Master's in Healthcare Education, and Christopher and Glooby, who would have been here today, has got that qualification. They are able to be promoted to Senior Orthopaedic Clinical Officer and Chief Orthopaedic Clinical Officer, but I'm sad to say that these are promotions are merely on, in terms of time served and not on merit. So what we'd like to have is a more meritocratic system whereby our better clinical officers were appropriately promoted to head departments in the major centres, etc. The qualification, the, the diploma in orthopaedics that they are given at the end of their 18-month training is not recognised outside Malawi. Therefore, there is no potential for them to uh, migrate out, outside and continue working in orthopaedics. Yep, might be bad for them, but it's good for Malawi. It's good for the orthopaedic patient injured in Malawi. Originally, we had one orthopaedic clinical officer per district hospital, and now we have two to three. This is the scene in the orthopaedic outpatient clinic in the Longwood Central Hospital. Huge numbers of patients, typical for developing world situation. And I, what I try and do is incentivize them. So with those who potentiate my visits, who work hard, this is one called Chewinga. He came over to the United Kingdom for a very short visit and undertook an ATLS course and also observed my practice. This is Kamuzu Central Hospital, the, the main hospital in the central city of Malawi, the capital of Malawi. It's a referral centre for all of northern and central Malawi, 7 million people, 500 beds but 2,000 patients, two general surgeons and only one orthopaedic surgeon, but supplemented by eight orthopaedic clinical officers. Dealing with this kind of spectrum of injury, which would challenge any department in central London or United Kingdom, this is a, a gunshot wound from a, a high energy transfer bullet. Uh, I also work with Malawi Against Physical Disability, which is an NGO, Malawi NGO, looking at the kind of what you might call elective orthopaedics, club foot, gin of algum, gin of air, um, sepsis, etc. And we have a very senior orthopaedic uh, clinic officer attached to that, Sandy Chimangani, who Gurr knows, and we've worked with a lot, who is probably the most... He's the best orthopaedic clinical officer in Malawi. He, can, he has limited uh, fixation skills. He's also able to undertake club foot surgery. But for the most part, they don't undertake complex surgery. Uh, that is the remit of the five orthopaedic surgeons. We now have the first full-time orthopaedic surgeon in Lilongwe in, uh, since I left in 2003. Uh, and we have accreditation for training in the higher surgical training. The College of Surgeons of East Central and Southern Africa has been founded and we're now training surgeons locally. We have nine surgical trainees in Lilongwe and we're accredited now for higher training. The, the, the light is on the horizon. There may well be more orthopaedic surgeons in the future. There's also a plan to give higher surgical training for OCOs in terms of a bat bachelor in medicine so they actually can enhance their operative skills. But at the same time, another change is occurring. We're seeing more doctors being trained. Traditionally, the only, the only medical school in Malawi, the College of Medicine, produced 50, uh, 15 to 25 doctors a year. 
Though the fate of those, and that we audited the first 10 years it was open, 90 to 2000, one third left the country permanently, one third worked for NGOs doing public health, malaria, infectious diseases, HIV, etc., and one third were district health officers who spent their entire time in administration attending HIV related workshops. Nobody wanted to do orthopedics. The, out, the output now from the medical school has now increased. It's 75 to 85 students a year. By market forces alone, they will be forced into surgical specialties including orthopaedics. The opportunities to work for NGOs have reduced, the opportunities for medical migration have reduced and therefore in future we will see doctors undertaking these roles and therefore the future of the OCOs is somewhat under question. We welcome visiting surgeons to Malawi. Gur has been, myself and myself have been several times in order to facilitate the OCO's work and we've undertake a lot of training and education. I conclude. The Orthopaedic Clinical Officer Training Scheme has provided essential orthopaedic care in Malawi in the absence of an adequate number of orth trained orthopaedic surgeons. An integrated orthopaedic service exists leading to a better overall standard of orthopaedic care than in many other African countries. With, uh, Thank you, Malawi in Chichewa is Chikomo. I thank you for your attention and uh, for Gerf for an excellent programme. Thanks, Gerf. Chikomo, Kwambiri, Steve. I'm glad.